What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. I've got a good one for y'all today. But before we get going, I gotta give a huge shout out to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Now, if you're wondering what I've got in store for you, I've got some stuff from the past that hasn't made a video yet. I've got some stuff from this past week that I haven't even had time to edit yet. And I've got some stuff that's coming up in the future. So right here, I've got a new rifle that I purchased. Some of y'all have already seen it if you follow along. And then right here, I've got something extra special. Extra special. Extra special. So these are thermal imaging binoculars. I just got them. These things are going to change the game when it comes to me for doing hog removal. This is a thermal imaging scope. And with the two of them together, hogs better beware. And we actually filmed a video this week with those. And I'm going to show you that in a little while. I'm going to show you... A little bit of this hunt because this is Jake's biggest buck to date and he killed it on his own. I don't have a ton of footage of it. I actually don't have much at all. But I do have some cool pictures. And then I have probably one of the coolest bucks ever. And I do have footage of this. This is Luke's first deer ever. And I got the whole thing on camera. But right now, I got to tell you a little bit more about Simply Safe. Now, if you're like me and you have tons of boats and toys, four wheeler side by sides, you need a good home security system. And the reason I chose Simply Safe is because of how easy it is. You order it online, it shows up at your doorstep. It takes less than 30 minutes to set up. And trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. It's the easiest thing in the world. They offer outside cameras. They've got awesome doorbells. They also have you covered inside too with fire alarms and smoke detectors and window alarms and everything you need to have the peace of mind that your house, your family, and your toys are protected. Now, one of my favorite parts about Simply Safe is it costs less than a dollar a day. There's no long-term contracts either, so you can start and stop anytime with no hidden fees. They also offer 24-hour protection and are ready to dispatch the police, firefighters, or EMTs in an emergency. There really is no safe like Simply Safe. And by far one of the best things about Simply Safe, if you sign up right now, you can save up to 40% off a new security system. Head over to simplysafe.com slash bluegabe to learn more. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about this thermal. So it's sitting on a 6.5 Grendel, which is a pretty small round, but it's a really, really nasty round. Like it will knock one in the dirt. Check out that little bullet. So the reason I put it on this is so the kids can shoot, it doesn't kick, it's not crazy loud, and it's just a gun that I wanted to put it on. The scope is a Pulsar something or another. I don't have a clue. I actually did a video with it a while back and didn't like it. I didn't know that this was the focus. I was just aggravated, guys, give me a break. So I got the scope and then I realized, well, if I only have the scope, that's all I can film with. So I had to get binoculars that also record. So when we're walking around, I can film them. I didn't want two scopes because of course you can't point a gun at somebody else while you're filming. So the video you're about to watch, I'm filming Tanner shoot. He's from Nebraska. He's been down all week. We've done all kinds of crazy things. I go up to Nebraska. You already know that he's up to bat and we're going to go shoot some hogs and test out our new gear. I didn't film much while I was out there as far as with the GoPros and talking to the camera because I wasn't sure if this stuff was going to work. So I knew if I got home and it, I did have good footage, I could do what I'm doing now and just go back to the footage. So let's take it back to the ranch. We're going hog hunting. That's a big hog right there. Shooting from here. Shoot him again. You whacked him that time. He's going down. He just went down. Good shot. Shoot the one right there in front of you, still up. K. 
Golly, you whacked that thing. <laughs> Dang helicopter just had to fly by right now. The big one. The, the one in the front. Dude, he wrecked those hogs. Now, I didn't show much of picking them up. I don't want this video to get demonetized. I'm sort of testing the waters, and the more I get used to using these thermals, the more I'll do videos, and the better style videos I'll do. And hopefully, this video doesn't get demonetized. But the next one, I'm gonna show you all of it. I'm gonna go out on a limb and show you the entire hunt, the picking the hogs up, the cleaning the hogs, because I think I can do it in a manner where YouTube won't demonetize me. Now the thermal scope, I've obviously had it the longest. I took it to South Carolina with me and Cornbread, the guy that I was with, asked me if I would shoot some hogs. Well, I didn't want to shoot them during the day because I didn't want to risk scaring any of the deer. So I did take this and when, I don't an hour into the hunt, a boar hog came out behind me, it was eating at the feeder. And the advantage of having a thermal was I didn't have to care if it was getting dark. The hog comes out and it's funny because right when he steps out and I got ready to shoot, a doe come out. Well, she didn't know I was there. You got to remember, she doesn't have thermal and it's black dark. I let that hog have it. She didn't run off. She didn't do anything. And then the other night I was sitting in my tree stand and it got dark and I looked around just to make sure there wasn't any deer around me that I couldn't see because it was dark before I got out and walked out and there was a coon. And it took me a second to realize it was a coon because at first on this, because you can't see the hair, it didn't look like that. I was like, what the heck is it? And then dawned on me it was a coon. The other thing you cannot see is a deer's horns once they're hard horn. Once they shed their velvet, you can not see their horns with a thermal imaging scope. It's the craziest thing ever. I was actually looking at a herd of deer in South Carolina under an oak tree eating some acorns, and I thought they were all does. And I went back and got my flashlight and shined them, and they were two of them, I think, were bucks. So if you're trying to poach with a thermal, good luck because you cannot see their horns and I don't advise that. So we need to take it back to Ona again because I want to show you all Luke's deer hunt. Luke's my seven year old. And fortunately here in Florida, kids can hunt early. They don't have to wait till a certain age. I know Nebraska where Tanner's from, they gotta be 10, which to me is the dumbest rule in the entire world because why hold a kid back that's willing and able to want to hunt? It's absolutely mind blowing. So let's take it back to Ona. I give Luke the option if he wanted to sit in a ground blind or a tree stand. He asked me which one was the highest. Of course, that meant the ladder stand, so it happens quick. Like, we weren't sitting down very long and the deer comes out. All right, let me explain what you just witnessed. Now, that's my seven-year-old, and that's the first deer he ever shot. He's actually shooting the same exact crossbow. It's just a siege. This is the new 10-point Nitro 505, and it's probably the baddest thing I've ever shot in my life. But the one Luke is shooting is a siege made by 10-point. It's a like a 424. It shoots 424 feet a second. This one shoots 505 feet a second. And I'm going to do a full video on this crossbow coming up. So the deer comes out, you know how it is if you've ever hunted with kids. It, it's hard to self-film any hunt, let alone with a little boy that you're trying to worry about if he's gonna make the right shot. Well, Luke center punched that deer. And when he runs over there and stops, I'm expecting him to just fall down. Well, he ends up standing there for like five or 
six minutes, I think, and then just laid down. And I was explaining to Luke that this is the process, you know, the deer's expiring, just that's the way it is, that's how people have been surviving forever. And about 10 minutes later, Luke looks at me just as normal as can be and goes, Dad, he's, he's still alive, can I shoot him again? Well, the problem now is the deer's laying down in grass. You can barely see any of his back. It's like a near impossible 35 plus yard shot, even for me, because you just can't, I can see the deer's neck and his head, and I can see a teeny bit of its back and I knew I was in a predicament because I couldn't shoot the deer. It's Luke's first deer. I cannot take that away from him. And Luke just looks at me as confident as can be and says, I want to shoot him again. Okay, there's really nothing we can do at this point. And I think to myself, well, at least if he shoots and miss and the deer gets up and runs, that'll unclot the wound and maybe he'll go ahead and expire faster. So Luke shoots him. I think he misses. So I'm calming Luke down and I turn the camera down off because I don't want him to be upset. I want him to realize that it's not his fault. It was a near impossible shot. So we end up getting out of the tree and I take him back to camp because it gets dark and the mosquitoes are so bad it's insane. And I now got to go blood trail this deer which actually took me like an hour and a half to find him. And it's crazy. I wish I could show you. He shoots this deer not only once perfectly but the second shot was equally as good. I was like, oh, like how did this deer do it? So anyhow, I get the deer, I bring him back to camp. Luke's sitting on the porch waiting with me with like the most excitement ever. Everybody comes and celebrates with us and Luke got his first deer, a nice spike, which we like to call a Palm Beach 11 pointer. I was so proud of him. Jake, on the other hand, he now takes his crossbow, goes to his tree stand by himself, I actually take him to the tree stand, help him up, make sure he's safe in the tree stand. And I had to go back to camp to get something. Jake texts me and says, big buck down, can I go trail him? I'm like, goodness, you haven't been in the stand 15 minutes. He sends me a picture of the deer laying dead on the ground. And this is the buck he killed. Jake's always been a natural shooter. And now he's sort of coming into his prime, wanting to do things on his own. And I couldn't be more proud of my kids if I absolutely had to be. And if you have kids, do yourself a favor and go buy a crossbow. Don't let all these opinions that you're seeing on social media where people are saying crossbows are bad. I don't care what you go hunting with. If you're going hunting, you're doing the right thing. You're getting into the outdoors. You're experiencing what God put on this earth for us to love. It does not matter what you hunt with. I mean, as long as it's legal and you buy your licenses, do not let the keyboard warriors on social media keep you from doing something that you actually would love to do. Go buy you a crossbow. These 10 points are absolutely insane. My seven year old kid could take this crossbow right here and ethically go moose hunting, elk hunting. He can shoot this thing up to 40 yards, 60 yards, perfectly accurately and kill any big game animal. I would, I would, guarantee you with this crossbow he could kill an elephant if we were elephant hunting. You might think I'm kidding, but I'm not. This is the most powerful thing besides a high power rifle I have ever seen. So get you a crossbow. If you're able to shoot a bow and you want to shoot a bow, shoot a bow. If you want to shoot a dang anything you want to shoot, just go hunting. You'll love it. But now let's take it back to Colorado. I want to show you some of the stuff that we did while we were there. We're going to go fishing. And then at the end, I'm going to show you the nice bull elk I harvested with my bow. Look at this little thing. I went and bought it from the local little, I don't know, mom and pop hardware store. 20 bucks. I got me a little beetle spinner looking thing. We're going to see if we can catch some trout. Just something different. We're always in the ocean or big bodies of fresh water. Today, we're in a little bitty stream trying to catch little bitty trout. Man. Y'all, this is Sam Clinky, and look who it is, Mr. Trevor What's Robert. up? We got some wild raspberries right here. Give me that fishing pole while you're messing around. Do <laughs> you think you can catch one? I don't know. I'm going to try. This might be why we're seeing so many bears right now, because all the berries are so ripe. Last night, I was sitting in my stand about 20 minutes before dark, and I heard something coming. When I say stand, I meant my tree stand. I could hear something coming 
and I just knew it was an elk. Look at this bear. He comes out straight below me, sort of smells around because that's where I was standing when I hung the tree stand. Literally looks straight up at me, blows at me, walks over, smells the camera, and then just fed off. Such a neat experience. These little things hurt your feet. <laughs> That's why people wear shoes. I got shoes that God gave me. Sam. Oh, you're giving Sam the first cast? No, I got I got it in my hand. This little cold rag right now. Let me see that rod. Look at it. That's something Richard Harris would fish with in Ottawa Hall River. Is this the, what they call the beaver pond? No, this isn't the beaver pond. This is just a little hole that we made. We'll go down a little bit. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let, let Blue Gobby cast one time. Check that little thing out. I want to bring it home and see if the cichlids will eat it and wake up the children. So Trevor, I'm going to give you a lesson. A little bit of line. It's all about like slingshotting. Look at that. Sam should have got one. Only blue guy. Megan, son! Megan! Megan! Oh, my real! Whoa! Whoa! It's a rainbow! Rainbow! Off. Why'd you do that? He just come off right there. That was a fish of a lifetime, folks at home. I had too much heat on him. I think this reel's got about 20 pounds of drag on it, so I need to back her off a little bit more. Hey, that was my first cast here in this spot. And if the camera angles aren't great, that's because Trevor Roberts is behind the camera right now. I'm doing my best. <laughs> if you follow along, I've actually been here before. Right when I started doing YouTube, I did an elk hunting video here with Sam and his family on the Clinky Ranch. And this is like my second home, one of my favorite places on earth. Where are we going now? Just down the river here. You want to give any shout outs to friends at uh, Montana State? Shout out to all my friends at Montana State. Hope that someday you can be on his channel too. Yeah. So I met Sam when he was l like real little, like nine years ago. So you were 11. Yeah. And we started fishing in these little creeks. We've had fun every since. And he just left this year to go to college at Montana State. Go back up this way. Ow, these thistles hurt. Why didn't you tell me to wear shoes? Most people wear shoes. Yo, that fish I just lost was at least eight pounds. Maybe 10. I don't know, by the time I get home, he might be 12. What are we going to do if we jump a bear? Uh, run. Knock Sam down. <laughs> yeah. It'll become... Well, why aren't we casting right here? Y'all just want to see me walk through the bad stuff barefooted? Ow. 
I mean, look at all this good fishing ground. Oh, this is a beaver trail. Yep, beaver slide. This is where the beavers come out of the water and they come up here and they cut all these saplings down and they drag them back into wherever their den is. Huge shout out to Mr. Kevin and his wife for allowing us to stay on it. That's their home place right there and our cabin is just below, right over there. So this is the actual river. What's it? This is the Yampa River, right? The Bear. The Bear River? What are you fishing for, birds? No, I've got home a tree over there. And this is where the beavers have dammed it up. You can see right over there, the beginning of the dam. This thing's got terrible. It spun up real bad. Yeah. What do you expect? It was $20. Where's them old salties at? He's got one of the old salties. Oh no, this is a favorite defender rod. Did you get it undone? Yeah. You changing lures or no, why? I, you... I was just hitting it. What is you. up with the swivel still on there? The swivel? That is some Yankee stuff right there. Nah. You got to take that swivel off. Uh uh. What you mean? No. Swivel stays on. Swivel stays on. I'm going over here to cast. So funny, we travel so much and everywhere we go. They have their own unique style of fishing. I would never leave that swivel on where I fish just because it's a lot more for the fish to be able to see and get smart. So I just had to wade through some real deep, really cold water. Check out how cool this beaver dam is. This joker's pretty big too. You can see right here where they got it all stopped up with mud, everything else you can think of. See if I, if I can do this without falling in. There's a good looking spot right over there. I don't see many fish in this sort of standing water though at all. So as you can pretty much tell, this is the bottom side of the beaver dam. Look how amazing it is that they can construct such a thing. Now I know it causes tons of damage in certain places, but this one's really not hurting anything. And it's pretty awesome to look at and you see that animals created this. Pretty neat. Holy cow, look at this. Look at this. My foot is a size 12. Look at that. How big this tree is. <laughs> and they've already cut this one down, but it didn't fall all the way. So they swap So they obviously swapped over to this one cuz it should fall right there. Man, that's one of the biggest trees I've ever seen a beaver cut on. Look at that. Big old chunks of wood. If I was a betting man, he'll come back and make that tree fall tonight because he's probably been working on it for a couple days. Got him. Got him. Oh yeah. We got dinner tonight. Now this might not look like much, but it's packed full of flavor, protein, and just straight up wildness. Hopefully Trevor's got a couple. He's upstream. Sam actually had to go visit his girlfriend in Steamboat, so it's just us. What'd you get? Two rainbows. Dang. You whooped me. Yeah, we got enough to eat so that trout fishing was awesome that is literally one of my favorite things to do in the whole wide world 
But as soon as we got back to the truck, we realized what time it was and we knew we had to haul butt back to camp, get our bows and get to our tree stands for the evening hunt. Unfortunately, it happened so fast when I got up in my stand, there was a herd of, uh, there, I think there was like 12 cows and one big bull and then two satellite bulls when we got there and they ran off. So as quickly as I could, I got in the tree. Trevor went down to his tree. Fortunately for me, one of the bulls came back and I was able to kill him, but I did not get any of that on film. What I did get on film though was, as soon as I shot it, I called Trevor and said, come on, I've got a bull down. So he actually got a really cool clip of walking up to me and seeing the bull I shot for the first time. And if you're wondering why I'm showing you all this just random clips, Normally these clips wouldn't even make it in a video, but I got to thinking yesterday, I'm like, I guarantee you my fans would like to see this. These are just random, cool clips that wouldn't otherwise make videos. And I've got even a couple more to show you after this. So let's go check out my bull elk in Colorado. I think that's one from this morning. Yeah. Perfect shot. Congrats, buddy. All I could see was back straps. <laughs> he made a heck of a shot him with this broadhead right here. That thing did some serious dirty damage. So the first time I saw him was right here. I'm sitting 150 yards over there. I cow called and he goes, ooh, hello. Walks over there and he smelt me at 30 yards. He's like froze. I said, sorry, buddy. Wow. Now we got some, some work to do on a big one for you. We hunt more meat, <laughs> more meat, people meat. And this ain't where's the beef. That right there is why we go hunting. We do like the horns and we do like the adventure, but we love the meat. Check out how big that L card is. I don't know, I bet you the thing weighs five pounds. I've never cooked much heart. I've actually, I've cooked some, but I've never really like cleaned it. And I've definitely never cleaned an elk heart. So y'all are gonna do it with me. Just like anything else, if you don't know what you're doing, just dig into it and try to figure it out. I mean, it's got fat on it. I didn't know hearts had fat. I'm gonna peel that off. I know I gotta get some of this. And for those of y'all that don't know what the inside of a heart looks like. These are the big veins that pump the blood in and out. One of them's over here. Just do 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 do. I think it's so neat. I'm just gonna cut it right here. Just to see what it looks like in the middle. Look at that. I already got an idea what I'm gonna do. Man, that's pretty looking meat. I'm gonna trim these little edges off. Right here. All oh, that's good edible meat. So is the rest of this. So is even some of the end of this. So I'm gonna chop it all up and get it ready to cook. I'm gonna make myself an Elkhart lunch. Man, that's beautiful. All right, so obviously I can't eat the whole heart. I just got me four or five nice, beautiful pieces trimmed off the edges. But this heart, for some reason, is a little bit gamey smelling. So I've got this pickle juice. If you follow along, you've seen me use it in a ton of videos. I'm just gonna give it a quick dredge in that. Vinegar takes out any kind of smell, any kind of wild game smell. And the longer you let it soak, the better it works. But this isn't that bad, so I'm just giving it a quick dredge. In the pan over here, I just put a little bit of avocado oil. I'm gonna saute some onions, season this elk, and I know it's gonna be amazing. And organ meat is really, really good for you too. Go ahead and put the onions and the avocado oil. I'm not doing anything fancy with this because I really want to taste the meat. Now I know y'all aren't going to believe this, but I'm going with Lowry's garlic salt. Just a little bit. 
I think I'm also going to go with just a dab of the cactus dust. So I've sauteed the onions down probably about halfway. Now I'm going to add the meat. Let's go with this big chunk first. Man, that smells good. Yeah. I'm going with the probably medium. Not medium rare, but medium. I think these pieces are already done. I know the onions are done. Just look at that. Man, that looks good. That piece is done. It's funny because I catch myself thinking this is some kind of like crazy primal meal when in all reality this is the most natural thing you could eat. I don't think primal is the right word. I think it's normal and it should be in all of our diets. Good, healthy, wild, organic meat. No hormones, no steroids, no nothing. I'm going to try it plain first. Tastes like good, clean, like grass-fed beef. It's good, like amazingly good. It's it's so tender, it's insane. And that heart can feed a bunch of people. Look at that. I do love though some blue front. Give you a little backstory on this. My mom, I can't get it open. My mom used to serve this and fried deer meat at least two or three times a week. If you've never heard of Blue Front, I have no affiliation with them, obviously. Google it and order you some. It's made in Riviera Beach. I know it's the same recipe it's been my whole life, and it's only local here to South Florida, but you can order it on Amazon because I just did the other day. It is absolutely amazing. I've never tasted any other kind of barbecue sauce like it. It's like, like a mustardy, tangy. Oh my gosh, it's good. Like that's so good with wild game. Mm. One of the cool things of being here by myself at this very moment, I can sneak Redneck up here and give him a wool piece. You want some help? Is that good? I hope you all enjoyed this video. It's something different. It's a bunch of just throwback, a bunch of footage that maybe wouldn't otherwise made another video like I said earlier. Tomorrow though, I'm starting a new one. And from here on out, we're gonna go strong. We're gonna go hard and fresh. I've got huge plans. We're traveling all over the world, going to Venice, Louisiana. Deer season starts here like muzzleloader when our deer get in rut, which is gonna be amazing this weekend. I wanna give each and every one of you a huge thanks for watching, following along, all the positive comments, all the love. Right now though, Redneck and I are going to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape. See y'all.